G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, this is my little Chinese lay that I've had for like, mm, wow, well, 20 years or so. A long time anyway. It's a great little lay. It's got a quick change gearbox for the feed rate, which is a terrific feature. You want to change the feed rate for the various types of cutters you're using and also so you can get off the, the metal quickly and then fine finish it on another setting, you get the job done a hell of a lot quicker. Not all lathes have a quick change gearbox for the feed rate. The small ones don't, and it's excusable because they haven't got much room. We don't overcomplicate matters, jack up the price. But the bigger lathes should all have a quick change gearbox. If they haven't got one, well, they're seriously lacking, and I wouldn't buy a, a lathe bigger than 9 inch that doesn't have a quick change gearbox. As simple as that. It's just not on. Inexcusable. Okay, now the feed rate on this, the minimum feed rate on this is 0 0.05 millimetres of carriage travel for per single revolution of the chuck. That's the minimum feed rate. Now I'm getting some very small boring bars which are like 2 mil diameter, extremely small. And of course the cutting tip will be extremely small. And to get a fine finish with those sized tools you need to get your feed rate as slow as possible. Now 0 0.05 is pretty good considering most big lays only go to 0 0.1. 7 by 14s go under 0 0.1, they're down around my reading, you know, 0 0.05. AL 250G goes under 0 0.05, I think it's I think it's 0. 035 which is damn good so what I want to do for these little boring bars is to so I can use them on power feed that is I want to change the minimum feed rate and you can all do this you can all do this I would expect all you have to do is have a gear that will lower the feed rate further than the factory standard setting so I'll show you my uh, change gear train and we'll see what we can do to get things to slow down even more. Here's your typical change gear train. It's driven from the spindle, going from large to small, large to small, stepping its way through the speed uh, differentials, the, the speed ratio changes. So you're slowing down each of these gear sets all the way through so that finally you're turning at a very slow speed on the lead screw itself. Now you've got two options, you can either increase the tooth count on the larger gears or reduce the tooth count on the smaller gears which is a much better way of doing it because obviously these will turn around a lot more times per number of teeth than well, the larger one. So, in this case, even though I could make this one larger by a few teeth, I can't make this bigger because it hasn't got any clearance um, to allow that. I'm going to reduce this gear here. Yeah, I'm going to go from 30 tooth. This, these are both 30 teeth gears. I'm going to go from 30 to 26, which is as as small as I can make it really to fit in there and also my Evolute gear cutters only go down to 26 um, teeth uh, what I've got so to do this ideally this gear should be something like brass or cast iron I'm going to use cast iron because I don't have any brass that size aluminium is hard wearing it will do the job but for longevity I think brass or cast iron would be a better choice so that's what we'll do, and I'll show you where the cast iron gear blank is coming from. So here's an existing gear, cast iron, one of the factory jobs. Here's my gear blank for the 26 tooth gear. You can see it's going to be pretty small, but it should be okay. And where did I get it from? Well, this is the flywheel off of... Uh, motor, a drive motor for an old treadmill, cast iron. 
that originally was there, part of that. I machined it back, parted it off, and now we've got to change gear blank. The correct diameter, I've machined it on the lathe with the boring bar. All I have to do now is mount it, cut the gear. Uh, I'll have to print off an indexing disc for 26 teeth first. And if you go to my web page, and I'll put a link to that in the video description, it takes you to my web page, which tells you from go to woe how to, make, how to cut a gear, how to make the blank, cut the gear, calculate the, the tooth, uh, spacing versus the, the diameter, the circumference, the whole bit. There's more there than I can put in this video and I don't want the video to go overly long. So we just do the basics on this. So the next thing is I'll print off the pie chart, the referencing disc, and then we'll mount it up and get on with the job. So now everything's mounted square on both axes, X and Y. Got the blank locked on, ready to be machined. Got the collets. Chuck ready to take the uh, involute cutter. All we need to do now is put the referencing disc on the top. I've got it glued onto a bit of cardboard. I printed it off. So that'll be tomorrow's job. I've fitted the Evolute uh, Cutter Arbor and I've got a number 5 in there and that will do down to 26 tooth so that should be suitable and uh, I'll spin it at about 450, 460 and that should be fast enough to do the job on cast iron so yeah, these are easy to make up Evolute Cutters are cheap and uh, if you buy them from the right place and also as I said, yeah, they will do a range of two sizes, it's not just one size, they'll do half a dozen generally. So I've only got a five and a seven, that's all I've ever had and gets me through most jobs okay, no problem. So now the indexing just goes on top and we'll adjust that up to the right position after we've got the pointer or whatever you're going to use to uh, use the indexing against the marks on the disc with. I've started off using a pointer, uh, you can use a scribe in a, in a clamp, uh, but for, ac for supreme accuracy I use a USB microscope, there's a video showing how that works, and it basically just reads the graduations as they go through and you just uh, use that to align it uh, with a couple of markers on the screen, quite easy. Now you set the clearance of the cutter by rotating the cutter until it just hits the, the disc, the, the blank. So you know that you, when you hear that noise, you know you're, you're on the surface of the blank and now you have to lower the shaft and drive the blank inwards towards the cutter 
the depth of the teeth that you want to cut. So that's your next move. Okay, you've got the carriage locked down. You now lock down the cross slide. Once again, this is an easy modification you can do to your lathe. Just go through my videos, you'll find it. So now we're good to go. We'll now finalise the indexing disc setup with the pointer, and uh, it's just a matter of feed the cutter. Well, feed the blank through the cutter and rotate the indexing disc. So now we'll bring the blank up through the cutter so we can see how high the disc has to be to get to the next referencing position. stop happening. So we've done a cut, so now it's a matter we can lower our pointer down to that first position on the disc and then we can go on, rotate the shaft, cut all the teeth and that's all there is to it. Here's the result of that first pass. You can see we've cut a, a, a gear valley there quite successfully and the depth looks pretty right and uh, now it's just a matter of move on and do the rest of it. So here's the final setup. You can see what we've done. And whether you use a pointer or a USB microscope like I intend to, you'll get a good result. If you use a pointer, use a magnifying glass just to make sure everything's really lined up. But that's it. As simple as it gets. You don't need any fancy dividing head or Anything like that, you can do it with just a plain old mill slide. Now check out the web page, the link is in the video description. Read every part of that web page or all those web pages and you'll be a dab hand at cutting gears because it's all there. Okay, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers.